Patience with Trials and Tribulations in Islam, Benefits of Believers' Trials, Turkey and Syria Earthquakes. In the name of Allah, the Gracious, the Merciful. Muslims will endure many trials throughout their lives. Allah tests us with hardship and also prosperity in order to validate the sincerity of our faith. Allah said, It is He who created death and life to test which of you are best indeed, for He is the Almighty, the Forgiving. Surat al-Mulk 67,2 The one who created death and life to test you, O people, which one of you is better in terms of actions? He is the Almighty who no one can overpower, the forgiving of the sins of whichever of his servants repents to him. Al-Mulk, 2 In all cases, trials can be good for the true believer. If he is tested with prosperity, he should remain grateful and he will receive a reward. If he is tested with hardship, he should remain patient and he will receive a reward. Su'ib reported, the Messenger of Allah, peace and blessings be upon him, said. Wondrous is the affair of the believer for there is good for him in every matter and this is not the case with anyone except the believer. If he is happy, then he thanks Allah and thus there is good for him. If he is harmed, then he shows patience and thus there is good for him. Source, A Muslim 2999, Grade, Sahih. Trials can be a sign that Allah intends good for us, because through trials our sins are expiated and we have the opportunity to perform good deeds. Abu Huraira reported, the Messenger of Allah, peace and blessings be upon him, said. If Allah intends good for someone, then he afflicts him with trials. Source, A. Al-Bukhari 5321, Grade, Sahih. Mahmud Ibn Labd reported, the Messenger of Allah, peace and blessings be upon him, said. If Allah loves a people, then he afflicts them with trials. Whoever is patient has the reward of patience, and whoever is impatient has the fault of impatience. Source, Musnad Ahmad 23122, Grade, Sahih. Musad Ibn Sayyidi reported, The Messenger of Allah, peace and blessings be upon him, said. The servant will continue to be tried until he is left walking upon the earth without any sin. Source, Sunan al Tirmidhi 2398, Grade, Sahih. Anas Ibn Malik reported, The Messenger of Allah, peace and blessings be upon him, said. P. If Allah intends good for his servant, then he hastens the punishment for him in this world. If Allah intends evil for his servant, then he withholds punishment for his sins until he appears on the day of resurrection. In another narration, the Prophet said, Verily, with greater rewards come greater trials. Verily, when Allah loves a people he will test them. Whoever is pleased will be satisfied, and whoever is displeased will have indignation. Source, Sunan al Tirmidhi 2396, Grade, Hassan. Despite the incidental blessings that might come about from trials, a Muslim should never wish to be put to trial because he does not know if he will succeed. Mikdad Ibn al Aswad reported, The Messenger of Allah, peace and blessings be upon him, said. Verily, the blessed person is one kept away from trials. Verily, the blessed person is one kept away from trials. Verily, the blessed person is one kept away from trials. How good is one who is afflicted but bears it patiently? Source, Sunan Abi Dawud 4263, Grade, Sahih. Rather, Muslims should supplicate to Allah for security and well-being. Abu Bakr reported, the Messenger of Allah, peace and blessings be upon him, said. You will not be given anything after sincere faith as good as security, so ask Allah for security. Source, Musnad Ahmad 11, Grade, Sahih. Likewise, a Muslim should never rush into trials whether among the Muslims or the non-Muslims. Allah said, Our Lord, make us not a trial for the unbelievers and forgive us, our Lord. Verily, you are the Almighty, the Wise. Surah Al-Muntahana 60,5 O oh, our Lord! Do not make us a trial for the disbelievers by giving them power over us, so they can say. If they were on the truth we would not have been given power over them, and O oh, our Lord forgive our sins for us, because indeed, you are the Almighty who can never be overpowered. The wise in your creation, legislation, and decree. al 5 Abu Huraira reported, the Messenger of Allah, peace and blessings be upon him, said.
there will be tribulations during which a sitting person will be better. If they were on the truth we would. There will be tribulations during which a sitting person will be better than the one standing, and the one standing will be better than the one walking. And the one walking will be better than the one running, and whoever exposes himself to these tribulations will be destroyed. So whoever finds a place of protection or refuge should take shelter in it. Source, A. Al-Bukhari 6670, Grade, Sahih. One of the greatest trials a Muslim might endure is the death of a loved one such as a spouse, a parent, or a child. If he remains patient and praises Allah in such a situation, then Allah has guaranteed a house for him in paradise. Abu Musa al-Ashari reported, the Messenger of Allah, peace and blessings be upon him, said. When the child of a servant dies, Allah says to the angels, Have you taken the life of my servant's child? They say yes. Allah says, Have you taken the fruit of his heart? They say yes. Allah says, What has my servant said? They say, He has praised you and said to Allah we belong and to Allah we return. Allah says, Build a house for my servant in paradise and name it the house of praise. Source, Sunan Al-Tirmidhi 1021, Grade, Hassan. Abu Huraira reported, the Messenger of Allah, peace and blessings be upon him, said. Allah the Exalted says, I have nothing to give to my faithful servant, if I cause his dear friend to die and he remains patient, other than paradise. Source, A. Al-Bukhari 6060, Grade, Sahih. The trials of pain and loss are very difficult, but in some ways the trials of prosperity are even more difficult. Abdur Rahman Ibn Awf, may Allah be pleased with him, said. We were tested with hardship alongside the Messenger of Allah, peace and blessings be upon him, and we were patient. Then we were tested with prosperity after that and we were not patient. Source, Sunan Al-Tirmidhi 2464, Grade, Hassan. An abundance of wealth is one of the greatest trials for the Muslim nation because in such a situation the Muslims are obligated to spend generously from it in charity. Kabi Ibn Iyad reported, the Messenger of Allah, peace and blessings be upon him, said. Verily, every nation has a trial and the trial of my nation is wealth. Source, Sunan al-Tirmidhi 2336, Grade, Sahih. Muslims are tested with great acts of oppression committed by authorities and powerful groups in the world. But we must remember that Allah has promised us that those who oppress us will give us their good deeds on the day of resurrection or take some of our sins. Abu Huraira reported, the Messenger of Allah, peace and blessings be upon him, said. Whoever oppresses his brother in his honor or anything else should resolve the matter today before it cannot be resolved with gold and silver coins. If he has good deeds to his credit, they will be taken from him according to the measure of his oppression, but if he has no good deeds left, then he will bear the evil deeds of his companion. Source, A. Al-Bukhari 2317, Grade, Sahih. In such a situation, we must remember that Allah will avenge us in the hereafter so we should not let our hatred or anger at our oppression lead us to commit further acts of injustice. Allah said. O you who believe, be persistently standing firm for Allah as witnesses in justice and do not let the hatred of a people prevent you from being just. Be just, for that is nearer to righteousness. Fear Allah, for Allah is aware of what you are doing. Surat al-Ma'idah 5 colon 8 O you who believe in Allah and his messenger and follow his laws, uphold Allah's rights over you, seeking his pleasure. Be witnesses for justice and not for oppression. The hatred for a people should not make you leave justice, justice is a requirement with a friend, as well as with an enemy, so be just with both. Justice is closer to the fear of Allah, and oppression is closer to disrespect against Him. Be mindful of Allah by fulfilling His instructions and avoiding His prohibitions. Allah knows what you do. Nothing of your actions is hidden from him and he will repay you accordingly. Almida, 8 One of the greatest trials is the temptation to resort to violence when confronted with an unjust government. But in such a situation we must be patient and attempt to reform the government without declaring a violent rebellion. Hudhaifa Ibn al-Yaman reported, the Messenger of Allah, peace and blessings be upon him, said. Rulers after me will come who do not follow my guidance and my tradition. 
some of their men will have the hearts of devils in a human body. I said, O Messenger of Allah, what should I do if I live to see that time? The Prophet said, You should listen and obey them even if the ruler strikes your back and takes your wealth, even still listen and obey. Source, A Muslim 1847, Grade, Sahih. The righteous predecessors, al Salaf, decried the violent rebels who lived in their time because their rebellion always led to further suffering, injustice, and division among the Muslims. Hassan al-Basri, may Allah have mercy on him, said. If the people had patience when they are being tested by their unjust ruler, it will not be long before Allah will give them a way out. However, they always rush to their swords, so they are left with their swords. By Allah, not even for a single day did they bring about any good. Source, Alabakht al kubra 8789 Therefore, Muslims will endure many trials throughout life such as being afflicted by a calamity, suffering oppression, or even ingratitude in the face of prosperity. A Muslim must remain patient with the command and decree of Allah so as to avoid injustice, selfishness, and various evil deeds that might come about during a trial. We ask Allah to relive the suffering of Muslims and to guide us through the trials of life and death. Success comes from Allah, and Allah knows best. Benefits of Believers' Trials Question Why does Allah burden the believers who do many acts of worship with sickness and other trials, when the sinners are enjoying all the good things in life? Answer Praise be to Allah This question may be asked in two ways, either as an objection or as a quest for understanding. If it is asked as an objection, then it is an indication of the questioner's ignorance. For the wisdom of Allah is too great for our minds to comprehend. Allah says, Interpretation of the Meaning And they ask you, O Muhammad, concerning the Ruh, the Spirit. Say, the Ruh, the Spirit, is one of the things, the knowledge of which is only with my Lord. And of knowledge, you, mankind, have been given only a little, Al-Isra, 17 hours 85 minutes. O Messenger, the disbelievers among the people of the book ask you regarding the reality of the soul. Say to them, The soul is from the command of my Lord. And the knowledge you and all the creation of Allah have been granted is little in comparison to the knowledge of Allah. Al-Isra, 85 This spirit is something which is within us and is the very essence of our lives, but we do not know it and the philosophers and thinkers are unable to define and describe it. If we are unable to know anything about this spirit, which is the closest thing in creation to us, apart from that which has been described in the Quran and Sunnah, then what do you think about other matters beyond that? Allah is most wise, most great, most majestic and most powerful, and we must submit to His will and decree with full submission, because we are unable to comprehend the ultimate goals of His wisdom. On this basis, the answer to the question is that we should say, Allah knows best and He is most wise, most powerful and most great. If the question is asked as a quest for understanding, then we would tell this questioner. The believer is subjected to tests and Allah is testing him by means of things that may harm or hurt him brings two great benefits. The first benefit is that Allah tests this man with regard to his faith, to see whether his faith is sincere or shaky. The believer whose faith is sincere will patiently accept the will and decree of Allah, and will seek reward from him. In this case the matter becomes bearable for him. It was narrated that one of the female worshippers of Allah suffered a cut or wound in her finger, but she did not complain about the pain or show any sign of distress. She was asked about that and she said, The sweetness of its reward makes me forget the bitterness of bearing it. The believer seeks reward from Allah and submits to Him completely. This is one benefit. With regard to the second benefit, Allah highly praises those who are patient and says that He is with them and that He will give them reward without measure. Patience is a high status which can only be attained by those who are tested with things that they bear patiently. If He bears them patiently, He attains this high status which brings great reward. So when Allah tests the believers with things that hurt them, that is so that they may attain the status of those who are patient. Hence the Messenger, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, who was the greatest of all people in faith, piety, and fear of Allah, suffered twice the pain of an ordinary man when he fell sick. And he, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, suffered greatly at the time of death, so that he might fully attain the status of one who is patient. For he, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, was the most patient of those who are patient. 
Hence the wisdom behind Allah's testing of the believer with such calamities becomes clear. With regard to his giving the sinners, evildoers, immoral people and coffers good health and plentiful provision, this is in order to let them get carried away, with their sin. And then punish them severely later on. It was narrated that the Prophet, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, said, This world is a prison for the believer and a paradise for the kafir. They are given these good things so that they have their good things sooner, in this world, and on the day of resurrection they will get what they deserve of punishment. Allah says, Interpretation of the Meaning on the day when those who disbelieve, in the oneness of Allah Islamic monotheism, will be exposed to the fire, it will be said. You received your good things in the life of the world, and you took your pleasure therein. Now this day you shall be recompensed with a torment of humiliation, because you were arrogant in the land without a right, and because you used to rebel against Allah's command, disobey Allah. Alaka 46,20 on the day when those who rejected Allah and His messengers will be exposed to the fire to be punished in it, it will be said to them in rebuke. You have finished your good things in your worldly life and you enjoyed the pleasures it contained. On this day, you will be rewarded with the punishment which will disgrace and shame you due to your arrogance on earth unjustly. And due to your leaving the obedience of Allah through disbelief and sins. Alakaf 20 The point is that this world is for the coffers to get carried away in, then when they move to the hereafter and leave the life of this world in which they found pleasure. They will encounter torment, we seek refuge with Allah. The punishment will be so much harder for them because they will suffer greatly, and because at the same time they will have lost the delights and luxuries of this world which they loved so much. There is a third benefit which we may add to the first two, which the believer will get from sickness and problems, for the believer will move to a realm that is better than this world. For he will move from something that hurts him and causes him pain to something that will bring him happiness and joy. So his joy at the delight to which he has come will be multiplied, because he has attained joy, and the pain and difficulties that he was facing will have ceased.